Folks, if you're on Instagram, follow us at Wrestling Change My Life. We post video clips from these interviews on Instagram at Wrestling Change My Life. Check it out. Give us a follow if you haven't done so already. Now let's give it up for Jerry Abbas. East 12th, that was our BART station. East 12th in, in East Oakland. If you got off that BART station, there was probably some buddy from our crew, Rex City Rockers. We wait and post up because it was like, this is our turf. So it was like, we're going to battle. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the, the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort. It humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time, I spent wrestling. If it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Wrestling Changed My Life podcast. This is your host, Ryan Warner. I'm battling back from the flu, folks. Four days at the NCAAs did me in. I'm on the mend. And we're ready with today's episode with the great Jerry Abbas, the first four-time All-American in California history. He had uh, three trips to the finals, one against Lincoln McAravey, one of the craziest finals of all time. Jerry Abbas is a legend. His brother, Stephen Abbas, one of the best to ever do it, three-time national champ, Olympic silver medalist, and then Jerry's son, Jaden Abbas, is an All-American for Stanford. So, the Abbas family runs deep in California, and Jerry Abbas is one of the first to get it started. So what an honor it was to have Jerry on the podcast. Fan of the week goes to Nate Smith, a wrestler for UPJ. That's Nate Smith underscore wrestling on Instagram. Thank you so much for the support, Nate. Folks, this episode's brought to you by Spartan Combat, the Combat Nationals. If you heard me say it once, you've heard me say it a thousand times. April 8th through the 10th. If you're looking to get a lot of matches... With just one way in, check out SpartanCombat.com and register for the Spartan Nationals. And that's it, folks. Let's give it up for Jerry Abbas. All right. We are here with the great Jerry Abbas. Jerry, thanks for coming on the show. Ah, Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. It's an honor, man. California's first four-time Division I All-American, which you think of all the legends that have come through California, just amazing and everyone knows Jerry Abbas, everyone knows Stephen Abbas, but a lot of people don't know that your older brother wrestled for New Mexico, rest in peace, New Mexico program. Tell us about your brother, Greg. Yeah, Greg Gascon, you know, he's, he's eight year, years older than me. Uh, and we have different fathers and, and he started wrestling in high school. And, uh, you know, being eight years older, you know, I always wanted to hang out with the cool kids growing up, you know, so I found ways if I could, if I was worthy for the day to hang out with him and the bigger boys you know I was usually their guinea pig for whatever they wanted to and and it's funny how I kept coming back for more uh, every day I always wanted to hang out with my my older brother and uh yeah he got he got into wrestling and and uh, he was already in his second year in college uh at at uh at uh University of New Mexico when he called me and said hey there's a local tournament uh, in your neighborhood, if you wanted to wrestle, you can go. And I never, I had a pair of his shoes that he gave me a pair of his wrestling shoes that I had for years. And I didn't know what I was going to do with them, but they always sat on my dresser, you know, too big, but, uh, I grew into them over time. And, and I, and you know, that my big brother, you know, my dad wasn't around growing up. So my, my older brother was, was that guy, you know, he was the father figure. And so, uh, it, it, you, it goes without saying he picked up wrestling and he was amazing. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I followed suit me and my two younger brothers, Abbas. Yeah. Not a lot of, not a lot of people don't know Norman Abbas, who's two years older than Steven. 
No, I didn't know that either. Yep. Yep. Norman Abbas. So he was a state champion <clears throat> as a senior at 106. And he got as when Norman was a soft uh, junior and Steven was a freshman, Steven beat him out for the spot. Wow. Steven was a freshman and challenged Norman, but mind you, their first five years of their life, Norman always kicked Steven's butt. Norman was small for his size, very athletic, very slick. Norman was slick, uh, uh, but he, he didn't grow much. But, you know, for, for those early years when they first started wrestling, they were workout partners and and he he was the one who made Stephen tough in the beginning, uh, and uh, yeah, once once Stephen got into high school, he had grown. Stephen had grown and put on a little muscle, a little more stronger, and uh, and yeah, I wasn't there, but you could imagine how how it would have been for them to be battling for the starting spot. Uh, Stephen's freshman year, Stephen went on to take fourth uh, fourth at state his freshman year. The following year, Stephen went up a weight class and Norman got a spot back. And as a senior, he won state at, at 106 and Stephen won it at the next weight class up. They took one other guy to the state meet, Romero, uh, Albert Romero, I believe his name was. And uh, he took, he was surprise finalist. So they had two first and a second. And that team, uh, Canyon Springs High School, took second in state that year. With three behind- guys? For three guys, what? California state championships. Yes. Holy smokes. Springs high school behind Cavalry Chapel. They had a nice run. Cavalry Chapel was dominant for a while. Uh, yep. But yep. That year took three. And I'll just, uh, I'll just ask you, I think when you move your hand, it's covering up the mic and it gets, it gets a little muffled if you, uh, okay. perfect right there. Yeah. As long as you don't cover up the mic on the end, but, uh, dude, okay. that I didn't know that. So, so you were off to college and when this is all going down, you said. Yeah. 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 I, I graduated from high school in 90, uh, 1990 and Steven was 96 and Norman was 94. So did Norm go on to wrestle at Fresno state as well? Well, he went to Fresno city college. He was small. Norman was small, you know, and that was when they had one eighteens and he was coming out of practice at one fifteen. you know? And so, uh, he, he, he was at the junior college and in Fresno city was the most dominant city was the junior college in California by a couple folds. And then they're still very good. And, and they had some tough kids there. They just didn't make grades. They could be D one wrestlers, local Fresno grown Clovis studs. Uh, but yeah, just that central Valley wrestling is really, is really tough. And yeah, he, he wrestled a couple years in junior college. Didn't do too well. He was small and, uh, you know, he kind of, he hung it up after junior college, but he, you know what, if he would have had some weight on him, he was a little different style of wrestler than Steven and I, uh, uh, he was, he was slick. I would say he was even more slick than Steven, but he didn't have the, 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 the power, the, the, the muscle and, uh, and, and the desire that, that, uh, Steven had Norman was, he was, his style of wrestling was not a competitive, but man, he was artistic, you know, and he didn't care about winning. He just liked to play the game. You know, I love so when the it, Abbas it would brothers, have been fun. I was going to say, yeah. I love when the Abbas brothers talk about creativity and wrestling. Cause it's like, I grew up in the Midwest. You don't think about that. And then you guys are out there. You're treating it like a, like a dance, like a creative. Oh, it's an art, you know, it's a martial art, you know, I mean, it, it's no denying. No, but, but I, you know, there's the wrestling Definitely a lot of ways to, to use the sport. But, yeah, looking at it at art, if we could add some kind of level of, you know, uh, that transcends the, the, the grit, something that's, that's above it that you can't really put a value on, you know. It's funny when you look, some people will put a picture on the wall and you say, oh, that's a nice little painting, a little painting. That's a hundred million dollar painting. Like, what are you talking about? Well, oh, that's art. It's all, you know, what you see. And, you know, that's... Uh, uh, we like to, I, I like to promote that. It came from my break dancing days. I used to break dance. So tell me about know, break I'll, dancing on the BART. Tell me about this. Well, you know, when, when we were young, when I was in, this is like seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade, we would practice, we would 
we had to defend our turf. So we would literally practice moves for, so, so we were, had to be ready to battle. It wasn't like, this was just fun. You know, we would get repetitions and focus. And you want to talk about how hard it is to learn a break dance and move. And you realize that most wrestling moves are easy to learn. You could chop them up and put them in steps, but you can't like riding a bike. You can't say, Hey, here you go. You, you just got to go feel it, you know, and, 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 and patience and focus and determination. Those types of things helped me when I wanted to learn break dance and moves, you know, and, and once you felt it, oh, it was like, there it is. And the excitement, like you got it, you've mastered it. And those types of things I applied to wrestling and, and, and the technical side. And I always say, you know what, the NCAA tournament, and it's not the guy, the strongest guy who's going to be necessarily the, the best. It's not the fastest guy, but I'll tell you what, the, the most technical guy, you're going to probably see him near, near the top, you know, his technique always trumps all the speed and the, and the strength and, and technique is art. And so you can't deny that, that it's an artistic uh, uh, game that we play. You know, it's just so, so much reminder of the human aspect. Yeah. Look at the great Yanni D, a technical master, you know, when he's out yeah. there, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to watch. So you're, so you're, Getting introduced to break dancing, and you would literally get on the BART, which for folks who don't, I used to live in San Francisco. Okay, it's the, it's yeah. The, it's the train system out there, folks, right? So it goes all over the suburbs, and each stop is a different city. And so you'd get off, and you'd be break dancing on the platforms? Oh, yeah. Well, we're, well we're, no, when you, yeah, sometimes, but usually before you got into the BART, there'd always be a, a crew there representing our BART was, if you know the BART system, e East 12th, that was our BART station. East 12th and, and East Oakland, if you got off that BART station, there was probably some buddy from our crew, Rec City Rockers. We wait and post up because it was like, this is our turf. So it was like, we're going to battle anybody and, you know, that, and so it was always a fun time. You know, we, we would catch the BART to go to San Francisco and always get the new stuff. We didn't have video cameras. There was no YouTube. But I tell you, it was, it was so much creativity because we try to remember like, oh, he did something like this. And no, no, it was like this. And you try to practice it and you'd come up with a whole new thing. There was, there was something in the, it, that, that was big about uh, biting. We called no biting. You could never bite anybody. Meaning if somebody else did it, you can't do it. You have to change it some way or another because you can't copy anyone. Wow. So original, originality was everything. Down. Originality stands alone, right? Wow. Originality stands alone. And that is, that is everything. A self-expression. And you say some people, when you watch them wrestle, you can see their insides. Can't you, you know, and that, and that's what it, that's what it's about, you know, expressing yourself and saying something without even moving your mouth, you know? Yeah. So you, yes, I mean, I couldn't agree more. And uh, that's what, you know, the podcast business, right? Original, original contents, everything. And, and that's kind of unique to this show is how we go about the conversation. So how did you, so you never really saw break dancing on TV. You just go to San Francisco and see it and you try to remember it. And that's it. Oh, you know, during, during the early eighties, it was so popular. Everybody was on commercials, the Hershey commercial. There was the Hershey, Hershey, uh, chocolate Hershey commercial would have a guy on, on TV doing windmills, doing windmills, and then turns into a, a, you know, a chocolate spinner. I mean, it was all, it was popular. It was, it was mainstream for a while. And, uh, you know, it was the movies were out Beach beat street and break in. And yeah, no, it, it was real. It was real popular. And I tell you, we, we, we felt like masters of the universe because we were unstoppable. We would go from one block in Oakland and, and battle another crew. And it was like, you know, a couple of years earlier, we, you might be fighting for turf, you know, and that's what kids did in inner city. They fought for turf, but there was a window there, a beautiful time where we actually battled. We danced and we gave it up, too. And we would take other guys crew too. like if you were good, we'd absorb you. You know, you come with us. And then the other crews that you beat would make an anti crew and then they'd end up battling you later on, you know, and so. It was, it was such a beautiful time uh, of conquest for a teen, a young teen in, in the urban and, uh, and things that the typical urban environment were, were lacking. You know, we were finding it and we were masters of, of, of the universe. It felt, it felt great being discovered, being the ones that were discovering things and other one, people were trying to copy, copy what we were doing. And, and so uh, when you guys were doing it, it was as important to you as wrestling was like, it was that big to you oh uh, yeah yeah wrestling is so much more complex when we were doing this we were really immature kids we were you know we wanted to battle so we had we would just focus on 
our areas, but we definitely took dedication and, and, and focus uh, uh, to do what we, what we did. That was a great time. And so tell me about, you have this background in breakdancing, your older brother gets you involved in wrestling, it's in the family. And then how do you first lay eyes on John W. Smith and his style? Yeah, I saw, I saw, first time I saw him, it was Goodwill Games. He was wrestling in Goodwill Games. I'm not sure what year he was. He was still in college. But yeah, he was low, he was low level. And <clears throat> instantly, you know, I don't have to tell you that he had some style. He had some originality. And I, 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 and my brother wrestled, obviously my brother wrestled. He, he was very quick. My brother was, he was very fast and he would shoot he, he quick, shoot doubles and, and sweeps, not low singles, but he was, if you were to define my brother and he was an all American, mm -hmm. they would say he was quick, very, very fast. And uh, yeah, John, you know, me break dancing, being low level scrambling, you know, going in circles and doing things at low level to the ground and then having seeing john smith shoot out in one direction well i can do that you know i can do that i can just shoot out fast at this low level you know and yeah. i can throw a little spin into my back right a pop up to my head if i wanted to you know so, so the way john was traveling uh and throwing his body i think understanding body awareness uh it, it was is, is is all about break dancing knowing where your body is your core where your center of gravity is and, and how you could create momentum with your body uh, and, and, uh, and amazing things like that. And you could just imagine how now you fast forward and, and you know, you have me doing the abyss roll, you know, and people are shooting double legs on me and I'm grabbing their leg and taking it running, going through, coming out between their legs. Nobody was doing that before me. Mm -hmm. This was 1990, 92. So you can check the calendar and you could call Ben Askren if you want to, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was it was a fun time. Talk about again a fun time of exploration when the funk first came out. Really good guys didn't know what was going on, and it was great, you know. And I was one in our room at Fresno State. We were doing this stuff, and I won't take all credit because uh, a move like that comes from three guys that are stubborn, and we were bringing it every day, and we weren't wait till Saturday to battle. You know, when we go Monday through Friday and we're bringing it, something's good is going to happen. And that's what happened. That's where this role came from. This stubbornness, like just because you have me in a double and I'm on my butt doesn't mean you got me. You see? <laughs> <laughs> yep. and, and that's uh, and that's opened up a whole nother area of scrambling, you know, so. So was that Dwayne Zinkin who you were scrapping with, innovating with on a daily basis? Yeah, Dwayne and Harold Zinkin, the both bro brothers. There's Nick Zinkin too, three three brothers. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Dwayne Dwayne out of the three brothers, Dwayne was the slickest out, out of the three. Yeah, yeah, the, the Harold the stubborn. He would ride you. He could ride. I would never let him Harold Zinkin ride me in the room because he would piss me off because I'd never get away. You know, so <laughs> I it was like, no, you can't ride me. But but. Uh, yeah, he was he was amazing, and the younger one, Nick, was was kind of a, a combination of of both. But th I had those Zinkin brothers there around my age, and those they were the main reasons I went to Fresno State. I mean, they they were just as passionate about about wrestling uh, as me, and they're right around my age, and it was a no brainer, you know. And it, it was a it was a it was a great time to join Fresno State when they were there. They were all cut the nephews of of Delito. Right, right. So yeah. you're going in. Going in and, you know, you led a resurgence at Fresno, Fresno State, you and those guys, Lorenzo, Neo, those kind of guys. And we'll come back to that. But just walk me through, you know, freshman year in high school, qualify for states, sophomore in high school, qualify for states. And then you yeah. then you get a second, and then you get a third, then you're winning yeah. S-Sport titles. What was yeah. like the the jump? Are you just wrestling every day in the summer? I, I, don't I, I'm, I am wrestling. The secret was is, is, is the freestyle wrestling. We had in the BAWA Bay Area Wrestling Association, we had freestyle tournaments in the preseason. So we had we had freestyle tournaments like I want to say in September, October. And then we had folk style season and then we had folk style uh, freestyle again and then the freestyle state, freestyle nationals. I, I always I always uh, wrestled freestyle and that, and that, and folk style back to back. And, and through high school, it was only one month. <clears throat> only August was the only month I didn't wrestle. And I just wrestled all the time. Yeah. You know? But again, you know, I, 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 we, we know the difference in the styles and, and I, and I promoted this with my son, you know, it's not the same 
as uh, you see, you might need to take a break from the grind of, of folk style, but you know, you take a break by going freestyle. Well, it's all about rolls, throws, and takedowns. You know, it's not about control, and, and you got to get off the bottom. You know, and so uh, it's about building body awareness and having a good time. You know, and the tempo is not not the same. The pressure, you know, obviously, the the gritty part. Uh, I say that the biting and scratching is that the top and bottom you know yeah, yeah. and the rest is art <laughs> yeah there's yeah. something about those summer tournaments uh i was just talking to another guest about that you know in illinois they called them developmentals they didn't even call them tournaments because it was like we're just gonna come everyone's gonna wrestle a little greco we trade some singlets and we're gonna yeah. develop you know and then it got oh, more serious like but that's what it used to be called in illinois at least you know good stuff well, you know, I believe as there should be a time where everyone, the enemies, the, the rivals in, in during the season are, aren't rivals in the off season. I think that'd be smart. I think that's intelligent, you know. And uh, when you think, so you're wrestling in the summer, are you doing a lot of weightlifting and running too, or is it mainly technique work? It is mainly technique. I, I, uh, I didn't do much running, extra cardio. I don't, wouldn't say I, I yeah, I hit the pavement like that. Uh, uh. And I, and I didn't lift, I didn't lift much at all. You know, I, I think even, even through college, I had, I was immature, not focused. It wasn't still after college. I was like, okay, if you want to do anything else, you better start lifting. <laughs> but, you know, I was in college. I was just cocky. Like, I don't need this. I'm, I'm fast and I'm quick. And I, I did the lifts like everybody else, you know, we had to do our lifts, but I was just going through the motions and really wasn't trying to make the gains uh, that, that I, that, but, you know, and I was pretty, I took second three times at the NCAAs. I don't know if I could have did much better than that. Man, seriously. I mean, that's, uh, and you had some of the most epic throwdowns ever at, at the big dance. And uh, yeah, yeah. Is you, as, so you, you get to Fresno State. You know, you, you had talked about your brother was an All American at New Mexico. And, you know, I had heard that like, you would read like amateur wrestling news. And when you saw his name in there, it was just everything to you. I mean, yeah, it, you know, my big brother, he was so cool. And, and I'm not just saying this, but he, he was cool and all, and, and all the kids liked him. He was the cool kid on the block and he was a small one, you know, kick your butt, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> you know, and so there you go. And, and, and that's, how, that's how he was. And I remember when I was in high school and seeing his, his name in the amateur wrestling news and he was, he was ranked number six in the country. I remember vivid being just my mind being blown how how good those five ahead of him were because I couldn't imagine anybody better than my brother was Superman. And so that really just blew my mind that there's people like my brother out there and a lot of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. But this was this was wrestling. And I and I and I started wrestling in Oakland and there was there wasn't much wrestling in Oakland in the, in the inner city in Oakland and probably still is to this day. I'm the last person to place in, in Oakland uh, from the Oakland section. And that was in 1990. So they haven't had someone placed from that section uh, wow. since 1990. But uh, when I was there, I remember, you know, my coach, he was great in Greco. He was all, uh, Olympic alternate, Ashley Sherman. Uh, uh, and so he, he, all our guys on the team, we were good at, you know, he taught Greco. We, I was, I had a great arm spin, uh, but in, in the city at that time, it was like, we're, we're locking up and we're getting laterals. Either you're pinning me or I'm pinning you. <laughs> you know? and, and this was Oakland. And, and so, and I'm like, this is John Smith. I like John Smith. And, and I, you know, I went low and people were like trying to tie up with me. So, you know, I, I wasn't missing in high school. I got very confident because I didn't miss any. I never missed, you know, but it, it was because, you know, I was in a good stance and these guys weren't used to anybody shooting low. And there's something to be said about, I know in a, in a lot of places that will say you need to be in a room where you're getting your butt kicked all the time and you'll get tougher. And I get it. I understand that. But there, I, and I'll, I'll be the one to raise my hand and say, hey, when you when you start getting confident enough, and you feel taste success enough. You say you like the taste of that. I do like the taste of that. OK, well, you want to keep doing what you're going to have. If you like the taste of that, you better you do what you need to do. So, yeah, uh, yeah I was in a, I was in Oakland. There was no good wrestling. I felt I felt success. Uh, but I, right away when I got into college, I, you know, it was tough. Uh, I, I went to between my sophomore year and junior year in high school. I went out to the uh, to the uh, AAU Grand Nationals in Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and our, our coach, my coach drove us out there in a big old centipede van. You drove? And I took, you, we drove. Oh yeah. my God. That's a like big old van 30 hours. Eight of us. Yeah. And the, and the van broke down in, in Lovelock, Nevada. 
I actually met a girl in Love Lock, Nevada. I don't know if she's here. And, you know, and we broke down, had to stay in a hotel. And, and then, yeah, and yeah, I got the car fixed and uh, we made it out there. And so, yeah, I took second at that AU Grand Nationals, lost a guy named Trent London. And, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, that did, you know, that I remember when I first started wrestling, thinking uh, amazing how it would be to be the best in all of Oakland because my mind was in break dancing. You know, like, shoot, if I was the best breaker in all of Oakland, <laughs> you know, that'd be pretty good. So I remember thinking in wrestling, like if I was the best wrestler in all of Oakland, that would be pretty darn cool. Well, when I went out to the Grand Nationals and took second, I'm like, I think I'm the best in Oakland now. You know, <laughs> so I wanted to keep growing and expanding. and Yeah, it was a good time. And then that and then my junior year, I took second in state. I was nobody. I, I the, My first match, I beat the number uh, number three ranked guy in the state. And he was from Poway. Nobody knew who this Oakland and, and during forever. If you had a 01 meant you, you rest in the Oakland section number one. And it's funny because there is no 02. It's just a 01. But that means you're get you got a good warm up match at the state meet. <laughs> you know, I was like, right. yes, I got the 01. <laughs> well, this this 01 here was a surprise, you know, and I and I and and um, so that my my junior year, I beat the number three seated guy right off the bat. And uh and uh yeah the rest is history took, i ended up taking second in state so when yeah. you were going it was in stockton california right yeah yep U university of pacific uop has it changed a lot in terms of size and popularity over over time oh uh, yeah yeah it has yeah that that uop was a small venue but it, it, it was uh it, it uh yeah comparatively speaking yeah i can't even imagine what the crowds we have now would not even fit in there so it's it's good it's 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 great it's a great great vibe i mean one division we all know that pretty unbelievable and uh yeah you do you like it like that or you think it should be split up into two divisions well i mean it, it, it's interesting you know I, I i you asking me i say i like it like that because we're the only one like that <laughs> Okay, and you know, as as, one, as someone is like says, originality stands alone. <laughs> you see, that's I, I, I like that. So you know, but I, I guess uh, for I, I see the argument for the expansion of the sport. Everything is for the expansion of the sport. You know, if we can build more fans, non traditional fans, that's always a great thing. And so uh, I'm I'm for that uh, for sure. You know, uh, and if it means if it means multiple, then so be it. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool that, uh, that they have the Indiana has one Jersey has one. It's like, man, that's just a, that's another level. I wanted to, to jump to your freshman year. You're at the nationals, you're in the blood round. And, uh, you had talked about, you know, when your brother was an all American at New Mexico as a senior, that was, that was massive. And now you have a chance to become an all American as a freshman. And, uh, like, what were you feeling going into that blood round match with Gillespie? Oh, I'm sure I, you know, I, I honestly, I don't even remember m m my thoughts there. I must've been so, so much in a fog. Uh, I, I, you know, watched the video a lot. And so from, from, from the video, you know, you, I remember, I, I keep, uh, I remember, but uh, yeah. Uh, and I, and I'll tell you about how I felt after the match, you know, those types of things will last forever. Walk you us know, through but, it. Yeah. You know, uh, heck I, I was, when I, 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 he, I have a good snap down and it would just work perfect for him. And I snapped him down and, and people say, you know, why I'm so technical. And I've had coaches, I've had coaches over my years, really good coaches too, to talk about say, you know, maybe it's not, not so much technical and a little bit more grit, you know, and Abbas, you're a little too much technique, you know, and, and I, and I've gotten that before. And I tell you, you know, my, to be an all American, I hit this snap down, John Smith snap down. And, you know, when I call it a burn, or you hit a move, you burned them. And a burn means that he has no time to show you any kind of defense, you know, like a nice clean duck, mm -hmm. you know, or the John Smith snap down, where it's just a quick two, you know, th there's something that's nice about that. And, and so I hit that snap down on Gillespie four times and he couldn't stop. He was just two, two. And then he throws me to my back. Yes, in the third period, it takes all these points back. <laughs> so, there goes all my snap downs. So one clean lateral drop, you know, he threw me like a rag doll. Yeah, and I fought off my back, and uh, and by getting off my uh, fight, uh, getting away, I escaped. It was tied up, so we went into overtime. 
and we both shot at the same time at the same time talking about wrestling you know when that when when overtime whistle blew we both shot and i was slightly more under him than than he was you know and yep i got under and i got scored and i actually got some back points as well because he tried to scramble through it so you know and then man i went and cried like a little baby in the tunnel like you thought i lost I didn't sleep, you know, and my next match, I was such on a cloud nine. I had my best match. Sorry for Tom Shiflet, you know, but I beat, I wrestled him a couple of times and, and, and uh, we're the same year uh, and Shiflet and I have some history as well. Uh, but yeah, I had to wrestle him after I knew I had placed, you know, and, and that, that, that was, I was so excited that I just was, I wrestled extremely well, you know, or. You got to go For back time. to where you, so you win, you're so pumped up. You can't even like sleep that night. Like, just tell us well, like I, what it well, meant to I you. I had to wrestle. I, I did wrestle. So after I won, I wrestled Shiflet and that night and kicked his butt. And then, and then the next day I, I didn't sleep. So yeah, you know, you win the blood round and then I won the next one and then, and then I was done. So the, yes, that night after beating Shiflet, you know, I know I've, I'm already I'm already in top six. You know, I'm slaying in bed with a big smile on my face, like kid at a Christmas time. Mind you, this is a greater feeling than ever taking second. You know, making it to the finals, it it, it felt better. I mean, I was just telling my son this, you know, uh, not too long ago. I, that 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 feeling was greater than taking second. Maybe the mo- the way I want it, you know, <laughs> but placing first and I had my brother there, he, you know, he, he placed, he was an all American uh, uh, as a senior and as a, as a freshman and have my brother coach me and, and him being there. I mean, we cried together afterwards. Yeah. He started first, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. And, and, and you know, and I was uh, so happy and excited. I didn't sleep all night. I remember the next morning, Delito's knocking, pounding on the door wake up you ready i'm like oh it's time to go so I, I lost i lost two in a row yeah i lost my next two two matches but yeah it was uh it was an uh, awesome experience no, no matter what but those two losses didn't even compare to what i had just felt yeah that's yeah. amazing i love hearing the joy of just like the first all-american you know it's amazing oh yeah you. And I was, I, I didn't plan to go there. If you, if you check the newspaper when they interviewed me before, you know, I was like, hey, if I'm good enough, I'll place. If not, you know, I'll know what I need to work on. So I was, I always stay true like that. I think, I think in today's world, you have to bring a little hype or otherwise you're not, you're not making anybody excited if you make not making some kind of prediction. Right. And, you know, that's kind of, I guess the, the, the way, way of, uh, uh, the way it is now i mean we need more to get excited <laughs> yeah you need more to excite me so tell give me a prediction yes i'm gonna tech them in the finals oh yeah i love it i love it <laughs> but you know i was always just being real and i and you know i own i i love people of color i love people who stand out you want to show me something different i i, I want to i love that I'm not one that says, say, jump in and stay inside the box and, and be like everybody else. I, I like to, I like to have others, you know, be their individual and show me you be your, be yourself and, and show your personality. And that, that's, what's great about our sport is that it's, it can, it's that deep. Like you can show personality in the way you play your game. Yeah. 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 I love the, uh, you guys take like a samurai approach to it. You know, it's, it's all, uh, you know, very controlled and you're not like slapping yourself before you match You're you're real, you know, just kind of stoic out there. And then you, you let the wrestling do the talking, um, was coach Toledo, a guy who was like a grinder type guy, or did he let you focus on the technique? He, he wasn't a grinder t- type guy. Uh, he, he had Gre- Gre- Greco Greco, uh, was his, 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 his main, uh, mindset you know so that that tempo no i mean it's explosive strong when you do go for something you go for it right and and, and I, I like to use this word kill shot right kill shot when you hit a move you know it, if this tiger jumps out of the out of the woods and you're gonna try to poke him in the eye or, or cut his throat right i mean you were talking about defending your life here you know i'm like you gotta this is kill shot and when i went for a move it was all about i'm gonna kill shot meaning this is going to be planting the seed that this guy 
knows he's going to have trouble beating me. Like he just scored on me quick. I better mm-hmm. be careful. And this is the kind of like, this is the way my, my mind worked. And it worked like that up until McAravey. I remember wrestling McAravey thinking, what? How come I just took you down easy? Why aren't you thinking about that for a second? <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what kind of feel did McAravey bring that you had you had like had you experienced that kind of feel before? What was no, different no, about that? Know, no, I scored when I scored easy on guys. Usually, it changed their tempo slightly. Something adjusted in their style, their approach. And no, I, I yeah, I, I felt. He, he never got shook very strong never got shook uh, i didn't and i'm sure there's many many wrestlers like that but uh, my experience is that uh you know he uh yeah he he didn't uh get phased at all uh uh by by the way i was taking him down and i guess i, I was used to it uh, phasing people somewhat you know just catching some something but uh yeah he, he was tough like that yeah, one of the all-time matches uh, that people talk yeah. about, and uh, you know, when when you look f- through your career, you got you wrestled with some some guys at Fresno State that really led a resurgence. Uh, you know, you guys had like three All-Americans. You took eighth one of your years, and you know, one of the guys you hear about during that era that doesn't get a lot of credit now is Lorenzo Neal. What kind of specimen was this dude at heavyweight, man? Oh man, he's, yeah, he, he he was great. I remember he was a, he was a senior when I was a. Uh, 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 he was a junior when I was a freshman. We were at, at the NCAAs together, and he just had the, the coolest phrases. He would say, how can I lose with the moves I choose to use? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and one time we dueled at Arizona State, and, and it came down to the to the last duel and, uh, and to, to win, and he shoots in on a double leg and picks the guy up, and he points at the crowd in the air he points at the guys this is for you guys and sets them down so you know he was he was great very very colorful very quick-witted funny and yeah he was a beast explosive yeah uh and uh yeah he, he, it was great to be around him and when you look at the transition from your competitive career to coaching was that something that was seamless for you or was it something you had to work through kind of moving away from focusing on your own development to focusing on other people's development yeah, you know, no, totally. I mean, you're asking me now, I mean, I've been coaching for a long time now, but I get, I, I, there was a transition and, and I think it's natural, right? There's definitely a trans natural, uh, unless you were, unless you were done before you were done, right? Mm-hmm. And then you can all of a sudden you're an amazing coach right away. <laughs> but, you know, uh, there's a, tra- there's a transition time and realizing like, Hey, I can still get enjoyment out of this in other ways. Yeah. And then you start realizing, okay, this feels really good, you know, and then, and then giving back to others, you know, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's invaluable, but you know, we, this sport, our, our sport does is it, it we have to be careful because it, it, it breeds selfishness. We have to be focusing on our weight, our technique, our meme, our mind. I get points, you get none, you know, I, I, hold you down you know and everything is about building self and self and ego and strength and 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 you know and then you have to be careful you can imagine why i like hmm i wonder two why two wrestling coaches aren't getting along <laughs> well maybe because they they're wrestlers <laughs> and, yeah and we, we were we were taught if you want to be good you better focus on yourself you know and maybe kind of be greedy you know if you want to be a great wrestler you get all the points, they get none, you know, and, and, you know, focusing on self a lot, but as a coach, you, you, you move away from, from that, obviously. And, uh, and you see the satisfaction of helping others and it's great now where I am now, you see the greatest satisfaction is helping a a grassroots kid, you know, who may not have very much confidence in himself whatsoever, but you could teach him a technique. And next thing you know, he's walking a little taller and you're like a freaking move did that, you know, a, a wrestling move helped him stand a little taller. Yeah. yeah. So what, what kind of coaching are you doing now? Yeah. You know, I coach at a high school, Mount Carmel here in San Diego. Yep. Assistant coach. I work, I have five other coaches that, that we work with and we just have a great, great system. You know, we're enjoying it. Uh, it it's good wrestling. And down here it's, it's Poway dominant, you know, and so they have an amazing tradition, amazing system, and they have all the wrestlers, you know, and so it's hard when you, uh, you know, when a kid wants to be good and you, you know, you can go to a room and you have five, five, six guys your size to roll around with. It's hard to, 
it's hard to see well hey you, you can get good in that room and so you know they they're they're a lot of the uh, they have a, a good uh, in San Diego area. A lot of the great wrestling migrates to Poway, and I try to do my best to try to balance that out, you know. And, and we we offer camps, and I'm I'm running a kids club, and that opens up to all over uh, to, to other high schools as well. So and it's good. I, I like teaching freestyle. And that's where we are right now. I, I like to stay in freestyle season. It's freestyle season, you know, and folk style is folk style, you know, and and it just seems that like you see more folk style just squeezing the freestyle time out, you know, and I, and I think there's a valuable freestyle is valuable in, 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 t- in t- taking a break and growth growing, you know, being, being learning technically. Uh, and those are necessary. Uh, I, I, think. I, I tell you now, I think the freestyle rules are a better product than the folk style rules right now. What do you think? Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. You know, it's still when I, I I'll still have to say that the, the folk style rules are more consistent, right? I mean, the score, scoring is still the still scoring. How you, who who who's in control of those though that role is hard in freestyle, and 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 who gets ding? Sometimes they when that you you know they have to call somebody for stalling in thirty seconds, just have to. You mm-hmm. know, is it, it's uh, it, I think I think folk style rules have spoiled us uh, actually because if you grow up in folk style, then you want to go to a freestyle tournament, you're gonna to find yourself probably bugged and bothered, you know, because you're like, you know, wait a minute, how was that points, you know? So I, it's a, uh, it's a little. I think the Sistorn system is is more struck uh, more on point and than than folk style. But uh, what do you agree more about freestyle? What what do you say is better? I like the, uh, I just like feet wrestling. I just, you know, I, I feel oh, like this yeah. year we saw a lot of just, and probably every year, but man, it just seems like a lot of riding with no turns this year. And I'm just like, man, those guys, there'd be so much more action if they were on their feet right now. Like just get them back up. Like let's, let's see them scrap. Like that's kind of what, you know, what, what I'd like to see. I just hate seeing three minutes of, Right there, I'll just tell you that you sound like the, what an artist would say, you know, because you say, yeah, all that top and bottom stuff that is not gonna pull anybody. That's boring to watch, you know. And if you want someone to come join, hey, check out this sport; it's fun. Look at it. You don't let them come watch somebody get rode out for two or three minutes. It's just like boring, you know. So yeah, yeah. But I mean, there's, but like you said, there's an art, there's a beauty in that though too. You know, there's an art form in holding someone yeah. down against their will, but. Man, I just like I just, I just think of a, a mean Brooks right now is in my head, and obviously two two amazing wrestlers. Brooks might be one of the best ever in, in this generation, and there was like three minutes of mat time, and I mean again to hold a mean down that long is incredible. But God, I would have loved to see three minutes more of those guys on their feet. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know you have to watch what you say because you run podcasts and things like that. But you know, I I could I could say what pretty much whatever whatever I want here. You know, and and I say when somebody's on top, he's more obligated to score. Hey, he's he's got the dominant position, so he's supposed to score. If his objective is just to hold him down, if he's told if he told the ref that he should get dinged, right? Because it's not your objective; it's to hold the guy down. We need to score points. We need to score for the sake of the re- re- you know appeasing the wrestling gods. You know, <laughs> like are we going for the W? And and that's a whole nother debate. You know, are we focusing on trying to win or or or, or, or hitting, you know, hitting, uh, you know, playing the game that you're the way you're supposed to play, it, you know, and showing, showing what you're supposed to do, standing around, you know, a lot of hand fighting and, and then, and then running out of time, you know, is a tragedy and it should never happen. We should never run out of time ever. We had plenty of time, you know, but uh, yeah, I think that's kind of things I see uh with, with, with wrestling obviously that, that that constant battle and i get it it's human we want we want to win that taste the win uh, you know but the, the the and we also have a duty to show the art show the show the sport show your passion show your work what show your work you know uh instead of standing around and and, and i'll always stand i'll always stand and I'll, I'll and i'll shout that as loud as i can because this is a beautiful artistic gritty sport and we can show it better than 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 we do the majority of the time but i get it because we want we do it for the sake of the win yeah you think we put too much emphasis on winning all day all day yeah yeah i see the the sport neglected like you know what you you trained all these months to wrestle like that 
these last at these seven minutes you know they think we think like this you know yeah, of course you know i i do i do i do think we, uh generally mo we, we we hold winning so much that it neglects the the job the duty which is to give the fans what are we watching huh you know you watch that's nice about some russians you'll see in the international and they'll, you'll see two wrestlers going to a long scramble and, and uh and uh go into a long scramble and and nobody scores and but the whole crowd is still cheers you know because they saw some amazing movements you know and i think we could pick up on that of that and that and i'll uh that's how i look at the sport as an art but it's there's a reflection on life is it not because the number one thing that wrestling teaches is if you get picked up you got and slammed you got to get up and and get to your base and another funny thing is, is, well, we, uh, you know, our base is on our knees and, you know, and, and we, and that's a comfortable place for us, you know, like we're ready, we're ready to go. And and, and a lot of people in common in this world, when, when we're on our knees, that's a place of, we're not in a good place. Yeah. But, but rest wrestlers like, yeah. And, and also go ahead and put somebody on top of me on, on top of this. And I'll still right. call this my base. And we learn if we get picked up and slammed, nobody's going to help you. You need to get to your base and you need to get away and do it to them. And if, you know, and this is the things we demand from ourselves on a regular basis. And that's the beauty of, of our sport that even if we're not successful in any, any of, of these stages of some of us can't even get up to our base, much less, you know, escape. Right. But we keep demanding and we keep trying. And th this, this is a beautiful thing, you know, that, that, that wrestling teaches us. Uh, but then the, there's the art and you no denying when you see a good move that's hit and you hear people go, Ooh, you know, that is something inside of us. We weren't taught that growing up. Like when you see something artistic, you make a noise, but boy, that's, that thing comes out of you instantly when you see a nice move and you see, so it's, it's wrestling blends these two, these two perseverance and art. Um, and we should never forget that. I love yeah. how you, I love how you frame it and you, and you think about the sport, um, one thing I was dying to ask you before we sign off here, Mr. Abbas, is in terms of like a mindset approach before a match, what were, what are you or Steven or, or your son or anyone you're coaching? Are you instructing them on like, you know, meditating, visualizing? Like, how, how do you think about that kind of stuff? You, you know, it, it, it's 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 different for everybody, is it not? You know, we get, we give suggestions, but uh, I mean, it, it's different for everyone. It's not it's not a secret. You have to know what what buttons you need to do to find your zone your own zone you know i, I say so, some kids they need to be in a calm place listening to symphony music you know and some kids need to be listening to some hard hard heavy metal you know or rap and, and other people just want to pretend they're not even at, at the tournament <laughs> you know like oh i'm about to wrestle and and and, and some wrestlers have slapped me coach you know slap me again and 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 all these wide range of what it means to get out there and and and, and produce you know be be the best version of yourself isn't that what we're trying to do when we find our zone uh and, and the best version of ourself the other things that pop into people's mind is you know you know that, that that can mess you up is obviously when you're thinking about not making a mistake i think when you start going to net negative places that those types of things uh make you hesitate hesitation me i was i was you know i i i was uh i always felt i had a confidence inside like i knew i could get in on anybody and i i i was confident that i can create create my world out there that i can get in positions that i was that i've been in been in uh before and uh i mean and that was my my job to get get into into my world so and that's what that's what i always try to do got to get i got to put him in my world and that's yeah were you yeah. a big visualizer like during the season no no i i, I wouldn't say i i did any 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 uh any mental training i mean the self self-talk was enough you know just the kind of the confidence uh, confident talk but nothing visual where i went and meditated you know it's it's smart it's smart now though meditation is bigger today and and, and it is it is smart you know if i would have known i i, I might have but i don't think i needed to quiet my chatter that was in my head 
you know, I didn't need to quiet it. I just keep feet, keep going. I, I like, I like what my head was telling me. <laughs> it was gonna keep going. Yeah, but some, sometimes meditation is, is for that to quiet the chatter and find, find your calm and find your center, you know, and that's a good thing in, in life. We, we all can, uh, can do this sometimes we think about things too much and i know i, I my brother steven told me he got a practice from me is things on your mind you write them on, a, on write them down right so you have your to-do list so it's not in your brain and you can be at ease that you, you just wrote it down on your to-do list and so it's not inside inside of your head and and uh and and then so we do this trick with ourselves he said oh it's not in my head so i'm at peace now you know, and so, oh, yes, you are at peace. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were someone who naturally didn't have a lot of like self doubts or negative thoughts coming through. No, no, really? I, 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 I did, yeah, no, no negative thoughts, no self doubt. It was too much. I was like, yeah, no, I, I, I was realistic. I knew that I would could go out there and give everything I had. It's like my breakdancing competition, you know, like I did my homework, you know, and I was ready to bring it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't, and, and I see my, my son where, you know, I, I, I see the, the doubt that he has in there, but I get it though, because he, he has me in a whole nother level, you know, deep, deeper. I call Jaden the strongest abbess. He's the strongest out of me and Steven, because, you know, Steven maybe had a little motivation and, and as me as a big brother, you know, but I had nobody. I mean, I had my older brother as well. The, the big brother uh uh the, the, the shoot shoot towards but he he was in college so we didn't spend a lot of time together and that was kind of that was kind of uh, uh there was a benefit because he was like some mystical you know guy off in college i didn't spend a lot of time with him but i definitely wanted to impress him and and let him see you know let him know that i, I was doing good in wrestling uh, so, I mean, I, I had, but I had no pressure where he wasn't showing me moves and I, and, and he wasn't coaching me. Uh, and, you know, so my son, obviously I took, since he was seven years old, we took, I took him by the hand and we traveled, traveled the country, you know, and, and so a di different, uh, different element. And, you know, the things that motivated me and things that motivated Steven, things that motivated my son, all different, uh, the things, our experiences are, are all different. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And for people who don't know your son wrestles for Stanford, which, you know, just another amazing example of how wrestling changes lives. And you know, the name of this podcast wrestling has changed my life. I just wanted to sign off with this question is, uh, you know, what's it like seeing your son, you know, wrestles for Stanford at the NCAA tournament. I know he fell short of his goals this year. Last year he was an all American as a freshman. I mean, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, I mean, just we, we, he's, I'm so proud of him, him getting to, to Stanford, getting scholarship there. You know, he, he's getting a, a monthly check from Stanford, you know, and, and he always tells me how much he enjoys his classes, intrigued. And, and uh, he interviews me, Zoom classes. He did a story on, on me, one of his sociology classes, you know, and, and uh, no, I, I'm super proud. Re school was the most important thing using wrestling to the fullest i think some parents we demand so much from our kids you say we want you to wrestle hard i want you to stay after practice and give me 50 more you know but then when it's time for for homework are we still on them the same way when they're at home are you saying hey give me another 30 minutes you know uh but but we we can demand this just the same that we demand from our kids in this sport of wrestling we could demand from our kids to, to be hitting hitting the school as well and and so that was the goal I, and and I uh, you know I, I can't uh, I can't tell him how much I'm proud of him you know wrestling I I went I was a four-time all-american my brother was Abbas has done it a bunch of times it's not like he he needs to follow suit you know he he, he needs to just enjoy what he he's the strongest Abbas you know he's obviously got the best education he's going to be financially better than me and my brother combined i have no no doubt about about that you know and and i think you know the big scheme of things if we you say wrestling changed my life i i went to high school in oakland right across the bay from stanford and not too many people from from over there were going to stanford and not too many even went to college you know and i had friends that you know didn't go anywhere after high school 
And so to see to see uh, see my son going to Stanford and he's doing real well. He's he's one of the premier guys on the team and he's carrying the flag well for Stanford. And uh, you know I, I couldn't be more more proud proud of him. It's hard hard to say. The first time I really got proud of him when when he was eight years old and he was fighting off his back and gritting his teeth, you know. And that's when that's when I knew that's that's when I was proud most proud, you know, digging deep. I love it, man. I wish we could chat more about Stanford and the changes of the coaches and everything that's gone on there. I have to jump. I have a day job. I'm sad to say, but Jerry, I just want to say how much I enjoyed the conversation, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of wrestling changed my life to see video clips from this interview. Please go to Instagram at wrestling changed my life. This episode was proudly presented by Spartan combat The Spartan Combat Nationals are returning to Jacksonville, Florida, April 8th through the 10th, 2022. Register now at SpartanCombat.com. Combat.com. 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 Combat.com.